Today, there's a lot of cool stuff happening. Lift off of We've got to be excited about the future. We've got to do things that make us want to live. Today, we're launching Unreal Engine 5.0 to all developers. First of all, there's two kinds of average people. There is the average person who has already heard of Bitcoin, and there's the average person who hasn't. Oh, I'm making these kind of deep fake images. Dolly 2 takes the technology even further. General purpose language model. It could basically do any language task you would ask it. Crimson Dawn. Innovation is flourishing. And as exciting as all these innovations are, there's a huge problem stalling more innovations from happening. And I'll give you a hint. If you're between the ages of 14 to 40, then you're either about to face this problem or you've been facing it for quite some time. It's student loans. Millions of Americans have one thing in common, a crippling amount of student debt. But my student loans are, are more than all of yours. Like my student loans is almost $400,000. I went to Chapman. I graduated college with $97,000 in student loan debt and did the smartest thing I could think of at the time. I bought a brand new car. Yeah, how much debt have you got? It's about $200,000. Oh man. Oh my goodness. Now, whether or not you're a college student, student loans are most likely affecting you. Today, the United States has $1.75 trillion in student loan debt. On average, a graduate will leave college with $37,000 in debt and spend an average of the next 18 and a half years paying that debt off. Which means from the time you're a teenager to nearly 40 years old, you'll have a large amount of debt hanging over your head. And yes, while on average, a college degree will give you a higher salary, I think the question needs to be asked, at what point does the cost of college outweigh the benefits? And are there other options? Because some CEOs today would even argue a college degree is not even necessary. You don't need college to learn, it, learn stuff, okay? Everything is available basically for free. Uh, you can learn anything you want. While I'm certainly not saying the guy trying to take us to Mars is wrong, and I'm definitely not saying that I think everyone should drop out of school or that college has no value. No, rather what I'm trying to argue is that I think we need a low cost, super high quality way to educate and accredit people in the future in order to allow more people to participate in innovating and tackling hard problems without huge amounts of debt being a barrier to entry. So in today's video, I wanna go over how student loans became such a big problem. Then I wanna to touch on the current efforts attempting to solve this problem. And finally, I wanna talk about a super exciting new project that I'm working on to solve this problem and how this YouTube channel actually plays a huge role in bringing it to life. All right, so there are three dates you need to know in order to understand how student loans became such a big problem. These dates represent important government policy acts that set up the structure of student loans, made student loans government insured, and made them available to almost everyone. Now at the time, this was a great thing because it meant more people who were previously unable to afford college due to their background or class were now able to go. But as a consequence of this happening, colleges started raising their prices because demand for a degree was high. And since colleges were now being paid by the government when a student took out a loan, all they needed to do was make sure students signed up for loans. Thus, colleges started to raise their prices and continued to do so because kids continued to sign up for loans. So over the last 40 years, the price of college has risen five times that of inflation. Where a college education used to be affordable, today it's a huge financial burden for most college kids. Additionally, it doesn't seem like a college degree is translating to getting a job. According to recent labor statistics, 40% of college grads are underemployed, which means they are working jobs that don't require the degree they just spent tens of thousands of dollars on. Overall, this problem started out with good intentions allowing more people to have access to a higher education.
but through the years this problem has snowballed to the point where now the price of college is astronomically high and the value has become questionable and unfortunately it seems like the current efforts attempting to solve this problem are not delivering today this problem is being tackled by both the government and both private and public companies a true three-pronged approach you're not really useful unless you're fighting off three vampires that were huddled together unfortunately these solutions don't seem to solve the underlying problems there is a huge debate going on today about whether to forgive student loan debt how much to forgive and how to make it happen maybe you've seen the government's plan to handle student debt secondly i am considering dealing with some debt reduction whether or not they cancel everyone's student debt or just the ten thousand dollars per person they're talking about now this is just a band-aid at best you see if the government cancels student debt that only affects the previous graduates that accumulated that debt but what about the current and future college students this policy does not actually change the price of college itself and thus, some estimates point out that if student debt is canceled today, we would just return back to the same debt level by 2035. So the government doesn't seem to have a clear plan on how to solve this problem, but what about public and private companies? Many people as we could. So we formed Coursera, whose goal is to take the best courses from the best instructors at the best universities and provide it to everyone around the world for free. In the land of public and private companies such as edX, Coursera, and online universities, all of them are trying to make a true college alternative, but they're failing. In regards to edX and Coursera, they have millions of users and billions of dollars in market cap, but their courses in online degrees still cost thousands of dollars. And I find the whole notion of deeming them as a legitimate college alternative to be a stretch, considering a majority of their users use these platforms for supplemental learning, getting ready for college, or just out of curiosity to try to learn something new, not as a legitimate alternative to college. And then if you look at online universities, they're charging tens of thousands of dollars for an online degree but then they're gonna take away the social experience of an in-person college? No, nobody's gonna want that. So overall, you have a lot of people trying to make solutions to these, but a legitimate college alternative is not here yet. But what's exciting is that it feels like for the first time, the market is actually ready for a change. I would even venture to say that it's hungry for one. According to recent undergraduate enrollment numbers, college enrollment is down 5.1% since 2019, which equates to nearly a million less students being enrolled in college today. Meaning that when COVID hit, the veneer of college was stripped away. And students for the first time started wondering whether the cost of college was actually worth it. I know speaking from experience, when I was sitting on my computer all day, teaching myself, knowing that I'm paying all this money to do so, that was not exactly how I envisioned my freshman year of college going. Thus, to solve this problem, I believe we need a free market solution. And that's because college is not going to decrease their price unless they're forced to, and the government doesn't seem to have a legitimate plan in place to solve it. So essentially, we need to build a competitive product that drives the price of college down as an aggregate. And to build this competitive product, we need to understand the five competitive advantages of college. The learning experience, a social experience, credentialing, networking, and a social cultural backing, which basically just means it's a social norm for everyone to go to college. In theory, a competitive product would have to deliver the best learning experience and content, be super low cost, innovate credentialing, and be able to show that this path can yield the best jobs and internships. Which I know is a lot to ask, but 
I believe it can be done. Introducing Project Eula, a project with the aim to build a full MIT computer science degree, give it the feel of Khan Academy, and then give it to the world for free. Now, it would be so naive of me to think that the moment that this releases, it's going to poof away and solve all the problems involved with college. No, that's not going to happen. But I'm thinking of this more as a start, a spark towards building out the truly competitive option of the future. And in order to understand why this works, I want to go into the story behind this idea and my plans on how to execute on it. Okay, so six months ago, I was in the middle of a gap year and I was applying back for colleges for the following fall. After I got into the school I wanted to for computer science, they sent me the bill. They said, great, you're in. It's only gonna cost you $27,000 a year. And bear in mind, that's the in-state price. So if you do the math with the two and a half years I have left, that's $81,000 which is the same price as a Model S or Cybertruck. And for me, that's a really easy choice. Bring on the Cybertruck, cue music. Now, before I even thought of accepting this enrollment and going to pay this egregious amount, I wanted to seek out other options. So I decided to look up what the best computer science degree program would be teaching. I went on to the MIT Engineering School website and found their computer science degree roadmap. Basically, everything on this roadmap lists what you would be taking if you were a computer science major at MIT. Now, disclaimer, if you don't know already, I am not an MIT caliber student. Not even close. I think I graduated high school with a 3.8 GPA and a 28 on my ACT. And if any of you know how MIT admissions work, that would basically be equivalent to me kissing away $60 the moment I pressed submit on the application. But even though I'm not an MIT student, I knew they had this really cool initiative called MIT OpenCourseWare. And on this website, MIT publishes full classes worth of content on there for free. Now it's not every class, but for the classes they do publish, they give you the lecture videos, the lecture notes, the assignments, the tests, and the exams, essentially all of the content that you would get if you were an in-person MIT student. Well, then I got curious. I asked the question, how much of this computer science degree roadmap is on OpenCourseWare right now? So I started going one by one, I cross-referenced between the degree and the OpenCourseWare content. And to my surprise, I found that 12 out of the 13 classes we're on OpenCourseWare right now, which is crazy. And the last class is on Google right now, but you need an MIT login to be able to access it. So essentially, a full MIT computer science degree lives online right now for free. It seems like a no-brainer, but that is until you actually try out one of these classes for yourself. First, your job is to get yourself to the point intellectually where you can understand the MIT content and understand what they're talking about. Right child? If the left child is a two I plus one, where's the right child? Which makes all of this content very inaccessible to a lot of people. Next, the lecture videos are super long, which means they can come across as boring because we're not used to watching an hour and a half to two hour long video. And lastly, there are so many features missing from this website, it's crazy. For example, there's no way to have a community tab where you can ask questions on here. And there's no way to make an account where you can track the progress of your learning and see how this class that you're taking relates to a larger degree which is a shame because the content of this website is amazing. And the fact that it exists for free is awesome. The experience just needs to get better. Thankfully, a blueprint for this already exists, Khan Academy. Personally, I give them all the credit 
for my ability to pass calculus. Just me. Anyways, if you don't know, Khan Academy is a K through 14 education that offers the best learning experience through their personal mastery learning approach, through their short videos interwoven with practice problems, and I would say through the sheer enthusiasm that their teachers have for the content that they're teaching, just goes a long way in making it more engaging and fun. But, but uh, gee, how am I going to get there? Well, without picking up my pencil. Well, well, I really need to cross that line. All right, well, there you go. I so I thought, what if you combine these? Wouldn't that be awesome? And I think a good analogy to conceptualize this is to think of a screenwriter. Similar to how a screenwriter will come in and take a novel and adapt it to a movie script, I think my role here is to come in, go through all the MIT computer science degree content, give it the feel of Khan Academy, and then make it for free for everyone. So I have this concept now. Now I just need to figure out how I was going to pull it off. Most companies have a term for this, a business plan, a roadmap, a pitch deck, or a master plan on how to bring sexy back. For me though, I wanted a more modest title. And this spans from May 2022 to December 2024. Phase one, I'm calling this the prereqs. If you look at the MIT computer science degree roadmap, you'll notice that you need a calculus two as a prerequisite to begin the other classes. Now, since I'm not there mathematically yet, and I want this to be as accessible to everyone, I'm actually gonna go back and fill in all the gaps I have in my math, and then slowly build up towards mastery and calculus two. I'll be using Khan Academy to do this, and I'll be documenting this entire process on this YouTube channel so that you guys can have data on how long this entire process takes. This phase will be from May 2022 to November 2022. Phase two, this is called the first run. And that's because I'm a student in this phase. And at this point, I have my math knowledge and I'm ready to go. So during this phase, I'll be going through the full computer science degree content on OpenCourseWare for the first time, the entire degree's worth. Throughout this whole process, I'll be documenting it on this YouTube channel, and I'll be making a ton of projects for my portfolio. This phase will be from November 2022 to November 2023. Phase three, arts and crafts. Now, I've gone through the entire computer science degree's worth of content for the first time. Now I'm gonna do it again. And with this focus and this time around, I'm going to be really focusing on how to make the courses feel like Khan Academy. And to me, that means taking all the long lecture videos and making them into smaller five to 10 minute videos that look like a Khan Academy video. And there's one thing that I really want to highlight here. I don't trust myself to get things right all the time. And I really want to make sure the MIT magic, the quality, and the rigor of it stays intact when I'm adapting it. So I want to implement some sort of feedback loop where I take the example videos that I've made or any sort of content that I make for this project and I send it out to other people so I can get a second set of eyes on it to ensure that the MIT magic is still in there. This phase will run from November 2023 to June 2024. Phase four, version 1.0. This is where it all comes together. At this point, I have the entire degree's worth of content in its new form. And now I'm going to start building the website that will host the full MIT computer science degrees content in its new form, along with practice problems, tests, and a way to track your personal learning progress. In addition, I would like to implement a way for you to port over your Khan Academy progress. So theoretically, anyone could go through Khan Academy all the way through Project Ulum and get a full world-class education for free, which would then enable a ton of people to have the agency to take their education, make an awesome portfolio worth of projects, and then have access to some of the best jobs and internships, all for free, which 
honestly sounds amazing. And this phase will run from June 2024 to December 2024, which is actually when I would have graduated college if I went back to school. But quite frankly, this sounds way more exciting, way more difficult, but I also think it has the potential to help a lot of people. Let's talk about YouTube. YouTube is mentioned throughout the entire process here because to me, it's just as important as the actual website itself. Earlier, we talked about the competitive advantages of college, and one of those was the social cultural backing aspect of college, which just means it's a social norm for you to go. This YouTube channel fulfills that requirement, and I think a lot of the ways an education startup fails today is because all they have are reviews and testimonials, which quite frankly are not enough. And that's what this YouTube channel does. I'm a real college student. I'm no longer in school. I dropped out and I'm leveraging my entire college education on this option. And I'm documenting that from the very start all the way through to me getting a job so that when a future college student is looking for an alternative, they can point to this YouTube channel and be like, hey, this guy made this thing and he was a college student and he documented the entire process and experience of what it looks like and feels like to go through this type of college and then look at the cool job he was able to get at the end of it. I think that goes a long way in providing some legitimacy and transparency towards this project. So now that we've talked about the YouTube channel and the battle plan, it's now time to talk about the hardest problem in all of this and what I haven't talked about yet, credentialing. Credentialing is by far the hardest problem to solve. And let me say up front, Project Ulam will not, will not, underline bold, will not have a university credentialing system. And yes, that means you won't be getting a piece of paper. But I would argue that's the trade-off, right? You're not spending 80 to 100 grand on a college education. Instead, you're leveraging your ability to learn all of this content and then make an awesome portfolio of projects to get a job. So when you're in a job interview, you can show them that yes, you did Project Ulum for your education and show them your learning dashboard, but then you need to follow it up with an awesome portfolio of projects that show you know what you know. And again, I'll be going over and documenting how to go about this. And again, I said that's only in the short term. The future of credentialing sounds really exciting. Sal Khan describes this in his book, The One World Schoolhouse. The future of credentialing will look like a low cost, rigorous exam that's able to verify mastery in a domain that's universally agreed upon, which sounds awesome. But in order to get to this point, we need to first take the step of delivering the best learning experience and content at a super low cost which will then invite an exam like this to exist. In conclusion, the student loan problem started back in the 60s and has grown into a huge problem that affects many people today. Moreover, it will continue to do so into the future unless a competitive product is made. Project Ulum aims to deliver a full MIT computer science degree with the feel of Khan Academy for free. Ultimately, a future where this exists just sounds incredibly exciting to me because its effects permeate way beyond just college. Imagine you're in high school and you're told you're already in, you're admitted to an awesome college experience that's online, that's free, and that's going to give you the best learning experience. Imagine what that does to you. Now you don't have to cut corners to boost your GPA to get into a good school. Now your only job is to just be curious, to figure out what you're interested in, what you're good at, try to become a master at a few things. 
because you know at the very end of this, you're already in and an awesome college option is gonna pick you up where you left off and take you where you wanna go. And just think of the flip side to this as well. College graduates are now able to graduate without huge amounts of debt holding them back, which means they now have the agency to go out and tackle hard problems and take risks. This future where this exists not only sounds incredibly exciting to me, but this future where this exists also just sounds necessary.